Yeah, after this week, we're not forgiving anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this that's is that's it. it. From Four that, weeks. From that's this point it. on. <laughs> Uh, how'd you feel? How do you feel about yeah, well, series as a uh, whole and everything? Yeah, this is, uh, I'll need to get to the end of the message quicker on the weekend, and mm-hmm. I'll do that. But I still believe that there are, such, there are different categories. You know, you, you've got the Matthew 18 passage is really talking about mm-hmm. the unity of the church and how we get along with brothers and sisters. Uh, but there's still a whole other aspect of where, a family member, someone at work that's not a believer that doesn't hold the same values, neither do they even hold restoration as maybe that important. That's where the difficulty of forgiveness comes through in the to, to complete the, the uh, forgiveness through all the way through to reconciliation. Mm. So, but you do have to forgive. So, you, so let's let's go. Uh, let's give an example that we did not not uh, bring mm-hmm. up. So, let's say you got a boss, abusive mm-hmm. all the time. So you forgive, but then the next day he's abusive, and you forgive, and the next day he's abusive, and mm-hmm. you forgive, and the next day. Well, that's one of Peter's questions: How many times do I have to forgive? Right. And Jesus said, "Until it, until it, until it's done." Yeah. And the whole thing is that you you have to live with the posture of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Now, how have been said that? If he's doing something that is illegal, this is where justice comes in. You don't, mm-hmm. you, as a Christian, you don't have to take it just because you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. If he does something that crosses a line, that's where you go to labor board or to the board, whoever it is. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that. You, but you do forgive as an individual, and you actually wish them well. That is the call of Christianity, mm-hmm. and the ultimate. A reasoning for that is because Christ forgives you every single day, again mm-hmm. and again and again and again. But the the climactic point of the message, mm-hmm. Drew, and this is what I found within my own life. One, forgiveness is not a one time and it's done. Mm. Uh, so the example that I used about the person 18 years ago mm. that I have reached out to numerous times and always tells me nothing's wrong, but as soon as I'm gone, man, it starts. Mm-hmm. So this is a person who knows how desperate I would like to restore the relationship, mm. but who sees this as a way to have power over me. Mm-hmm. So I'm never, so in other words, I'm never going to restore it, and you're always going to want it restored. So I know mm-hmm. I've got something that can offend. And so here's yeah. a guy that wants to be my enemy, doesn't right. want to be, doesn't want to restore, and he's a, and he's a Christian. He's actually mm-hmm. a pastor, <laughs> okay? Wow. Yeah. So here's a guy that does not want reconciliation. Wow. There's nothing I can do. So I forgive him, uh, when I, and I wish him well, and then maybe a year will go by and something will come up, and it'll all come up again, mm-hmm. and then the feelings come back, the emotions come back. Uh, the wrong that's been done, I should not feel guilty about that. Uh, I should, I should, I should admit this is wrong, this is unjust, and and he should know better. Mm-hmm. However, then you move toward forgiveness, yeah. and you say, okay, but still, cry. And here's 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 what helps me do that. One, Jesus forgives me every day for mm-hmm. thoughts, for for emotions that I have that I don't deal with appropriately. As we've said before, nothing wrong with anger; it's how you deal with the anger. Mm-hmm. Even even envy and jealousy in a short moment yeah. is supposed to enable you, okay, what am I doing here and why am I doing it? Where am I putting my hope and trust and my significance? Mm-hmm. All those emotions are actually healthy in the sense if you respond correctly to them, they're supposed to show you what's going on in your heart yeah. and that you need a heart change. So the way to do this is to remember that you're a sinner. Don't, don't belittle what has been done. Don't live in denial that the hurt is not real. The hurt is real. But then remember that... One, Christ wants to give you what he requires. Mm -hmm. Remember that he's a high priest before God, having suffered all that you've suffered, and he's your advocate. He's Mm -hmm. on your side, and he's justifying you. So what we're supposed to do is those people who have offended us, we're supposed to provide a way of forgiveness for them as Christ provides a way of forgiveness for us. And that means wishing them well, and in in cases where it's possible, restoration, Mm -hmm. reconciliation. But you have to be wise there, Mm -hmm. wise. But the thing, the, the clincher, the thing that gets me over the hump is that I, that view of heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, one day I'm going to be there, and I'm going to see all that God has provided. And it's going to, I think, man, why did I ever sweat the small stuff? Mm-hmm. So what? This guy offended me. It hurt me. Okay, but there's so many good things in my life, right. so many people who love me. So many, Why do I allow that mm-hmm. to stifle all the good that's in my life? Yeah. Uh, if you can forget, that's great. If I could just forgive, forget, put it over here, and hope that one day restoration will happen, and even pray uh, for restoration to happen one day. Pray for yeah. my enemies. Pray for those who persecute. But let it go. And as a pastor, the only time I ever talk about it uh, is this time mm-hmm. to remind people that it's real for me. Mm-hmm. 
you know, but I'm not going to mention a name. I'm not going to, you know, that's right. none of anybody's business. Yeah. But, but it's, it's good that we know that Christ has done so much for us. And if we can close our eyes, sometimes I'll, you know, in, in, and I'm in heaven now and I'm with my mom and my dad and I've got, I've got the rest of eternity to experience the goodness and the greatness of God. Mm -hmm. If I will let myself go there, I think I'll have a little glimpse of how I would really see that person then. Mm. No, I would really look at that person now as, oh man, that really, what I mean, of all the issues in the world, so when what Christ does for me, did for me, becomes more real to me than the offense somebody committed against mm -hmm. me, I think I'll be able to forgive and move on yeah. and, and genuinely wish them well because of, you know, I wish I could think of an example, and Drew, maybe you might or some of our listeners yeah. might. There, there's got to be a human example where this works, mm. to where something puts it in perspective that enables you to see it mm -hmm. as it is, not how the devil wants to get a foothold and make it to be the, the end of your life and destroy you, because that's what he wants. Yeah. Something yeah. that's happened to you, he wants it, you to think about it all the time till he stifles any forward progress, and it just, right. you're bitter, you're eating up, there's a cancer, it grows, right. and it ruins the rest of your life. Correct. That, to him, is a good thing. That's why right. I said last week, you know, imagine how frustrated he is right. when you forgive and then you move on toward a ministry of, of reconciliation and helping yeah. the people who've suffered the same uh, sin mm -hmm. that you've suffered. Yeah. And so there's got to be a human example of that to where something happens that puts it in perspective. Right. I just haven't come up with it yet. Right, right, yeah. Somebody out there is going to email us. Oh, say, oh I got uh, it, Jeff. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's like when you go to your favorite team's football game <laughs> and, you know, you're sitting there and you're suffering so much because they're playing so bad and in the end they pull out the victory. Yeah, right, well, right. If you right. go ahead to the victory, all those mishaps wouldn't seem so bad. Correct, yeah, exactly. Well, you forget about all the yeah, mishaps. Yeah, all the mishaps. Because you won. You did because you won. You're celebrating. What's yeah. a year? It doesn't matter. Yeah, all the yeah, fumble yeah. doesn't matter. The, Correct. The, 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 the offside sides doesn't matter you know the <laughs> yeah. coach throwing something onto the field all the things that made you really mad and just ruined your life right. you know does it but but there's still some weakness to that illustration yeah. right right i don't know what it is uh, uh, well part of me thinks about like matthew 7 when he says why um the speck in your brother's eye like why do you judge that when you have the log in your eye yeah and i always think about the imagery of that of like yeah. a log in your eye think about taking that log out you're going to be exhausted to the yeah. point when you look at the spec, you're going to be like, listen, I just did I so much of my work. Yeah. yeah, I don't have time to <laughs> deal with that, man. Correct. I don't have time to deal um, with that spec. That's a good point. I never I never thought of it like that. The work it takes yeah. to get rid of the log, you Correct. don't have any energy left. Right, right. And, and for you, it's the reality, kind of like what you're saying, like the reality that this is so little that uh, there's no reason, there's no reason to harbor on this anymore and hold that resentment. You know, mm -hmm. is there, will there be a time where you can, get the spec I'll, absolutely uh, um is, it doesn't say that you should not still do that of yeah. course you do that but i think it's a real reflective of like no let me take the time to actually look into myself and see what 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 the logs are you know what is that log that i need to yeah. before i can even even help you with the spec in in your yeah. eye which i think is like kind of your whole message um is really talking about that of, yeah. of really looking at that yeah, the, the 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 point of the series, the the reason I was motivated to bring the series on forgiveness was it had a, it had a few issues. Number mm -hmm. one is that Christians understand that individual forgiveness does not mean the absence of corporate justice. Right. That's important. So I can forgive the person who abused me, but I still should expect them to pay the penalty for their mm -hmm. violation of law. Mm -hmm. Not because of my vindication, but because yeah. of future protection of those who are mm -hmm. innocent. Mm -hmm. So if the person who raped me doesn't go to prison, he's going to rape others. Right. So justice occurs for the sake of the protection of future innocent. Right. As an individual, I have to find it in my life somehow to forgive him without right. restoring with him. Right. I don't, I'm not going to go back into any, I don't want to be around the guy at all because right. there's a lack of trust and right. who knows what, but I can wish him well. Mm -hmm. Part of that wishing of well, by the way, is what Rachel, Rachel Denhollander did, mm -hmm. uh, is to say, I hope you find Jesus right. so that you repent. Correct. And so that in your repentance, you can be forgiven and stop mm -hmm. this activity. That's a, you know, that is a way to wish somebody well. Right. I wish you so well that you meet Jesus. Right. And as you do you re recognize the magnitude of your sin mm -hmm. repent and then a soul is saved right and that's what uh 
the gentleman did in the illustration I used in the beginning of the sermon. Right. Mm-hmm. He said, I forgive you, and yeah. I wish you well, and I hope you find Jesus. Yeah. Because if yeah. you find Jesus, that's the best thing that could happen to you. Boy, what right. a great statement. Right. By the way, she did go to prison for 10 years. Mm. Yeah, well. And she was sentenced for 10 years in yeah. prison yeah. because of involuntary manslaughter. Yeah. Uh, you can't take a life and not be punished for it. But, Correct. But that was, a, that was a sad case, wasn't it? Right. It and what totally we didn't is, see yeah. is all the brothers in the family come mm-hmm. up and say, you know, I hope you burn in hell. Right. I, wish, I, I wish you never... You know, so yeah, she must have just and she melted when she uh, right, you know, yeah. I need to do a follow up story. That was 2018, so yeah, that, she'll yeah, get out in 2028. Good. Probably mm-hmm. she could be out now because of probation. Like, you're right, you're right. I need to follow that story up yeah, and see what should. happened. There's a similar story within. So uh, our one of our team members for the online community, uh, his name's Bob, and actually I saw I just emailed you his whole story that he did, um, but he. He and his family, it was him, his wife, and his two kids. They were vacationing out. And I, I believe, he, he can correct me if I'm wrong because he watches all of these, uh, but uh, a drunk driver hit them and his wife died. And uh, he survived and the two kids survived. And he said it was really hard for him, you know, obviously that whole process. Um, and then he was, it was a very similar story. He was in that courtroom and he told him, I forgive you. Oh, man. I forgive you. How did he respond? Uh, he said that he felt it. He broke down. Yeah. Um, and he pleaded, uh, and, and Bob pleaded with the judge and said, Don't give him 20 years. Like, like I, I, I plead with you, like, don't do that. Yes, he needs to go through the justice system, but I believe that he, because he, I want to say that he wasn't an alcoholic. He wasn't, uh, the way Bob just, des- Bob describes it is that he, just made one mistake. Yeah. One mistake. So it's not like he had a history, history of drug driving. Of it. No, wow. No, not at no, all. That's sad. That's mm-hmm. sad that a guy would go to prison. I mean, it's, yeah. Okay. It's sad that a life was lost. Yeah. Right. But it's sad that two lives would be lost. Mm-hmm. Correct. That's probably what yeah. Bob said. Do you know what happened in the end? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Bob, Bob kept, I think, tried to keep up with him as much as he could. Um, but it it did really weigh heavy on him, and he he ended up taking his own life oh, in, in, during the process. Yeah, and so he has the whole DMs of the mom and the sister, I believe, uh, when they told him and everything. And but the thing is, that's really uh, the the thing that's awesome is that when he when they messaged him, they were thanking him for the light that he was in his life, and they were thanking Bob for you know you you did the best that you can. Thank you for forgiving him. Thank you for for showing him that light. Like you know this there's oh, nothing wow. else you could have done you know wow. how long was he in prison before I th- he, that's a good question I know it didn't it didn't end up being 20 years I know yeah. it was just under like th- I think it was three years and then five year probation wow so I know it was did he, do, did he take his life during probation or during prison I, I want to say during probation Bob can correct me correct me if he hears it yeah yeah the, the, um, the guilt is a powerful thing yeah yeah but Bob really talks about like that process, it's not easy, but he knew it was. It was really interesting reading it, and and I emailed it to you, so I, I want yeah, you to read it. Sure. Um, he really talks about how I knew that this was not only for me, but it was for the glory of Christ to be shown through it. And I'm just like, man, the 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 heart, you know, to to have that, to think even even think that is is powerful. Yeah. 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 That's a. Uh... That's a testimony. Something supernatural happens in the lives of people. Yeah. Has to. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you this here's a guy that's responsible for the death of a woman that you love, your mother, right. the mother to your children, the wife. Yeah. It, I believe that it has to be a supernatural thing. You have to get a glimpse of something mm-hmm. that only Jesus can give you because Correct. we're not able to do that in our flesh. It's just not mm-hmm. able. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's good that we value life to such a degree that when it's lost, there's mm-hmm. deep pain. So yeah. that's a good thing. But to have that kind of compassion and forgiveness for someone who has affected your life that way, I don't believe you can do that without something supernatural happening. Correct, yeah. Which is why I use the stories of of, uh, Corey Ten Boom. Yeah, powerful. And uh, Louis Zamperini. Mm. Because I I think we— I think when something like that happens, or we as Christians say to ourselves, man, if something like that happens, I don't know if I could do that. Right. Well, right now where you're seated, you couldn't. Mm-hmm. But you don't know the supernatural power he's going to give you Correct. to call you, to anoint you for such a time as this, to, to bring yeah. the good news of the gospel to the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just don't know. Right. And then right. especially when it 
you know, that this is a situation where a guy was repentant. What do you do now when you've got a guy that's not repentant? He I was just, about to he ask just murdered that. your wife. Mm-hmm. And he, because it was initiation, yeah. murder somebody uh, who's part of this part of town. And they did, and they had no remorse and they're in prison. Yep. You know, can you free, can you wish them well? And I think right. you can. Yeah. I really think you can. You're, part of wishing them well is they find Jesus. Right. Because there's nothing better than finding Jesus. Correct. And so, it, you know, you wish that they find, so they repent, come to the knowledge of what they've done and be forgiven. Yeah. That's right. the ultimate wishing well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. I wanted to bring that scenario up to you because there, there's a famous, or not a famous, there's just a, a viral clip of, I, I want to say it's either a gang member uh, who uh, shot some uh, a kid. And so he's he's up on trial and, and the, the parents there, they give their statements and everything. And then at the end of it, you just see no remorse, no yeah. nothing. And he, I believe he even says like, I would do it again. And I mean, I mean, verbally, you can just see him verbally saying these things and like, just almost like chilling, like doesn't yeah. care that he's going Whatever. to prison. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. So what do you, what would you say to the family you know, of that family that are like, I want him to suffer because there is no remorse. Yeah. I think that if I were a parent in that room, that I would say something that would s- stir him. Mm. And yeah. if you, if you if you return evil with evil, <laughs> he's going to just get, he's just going to be more evil. You're right. But if you were to say something like him, okay, but I still forgive you. Right. You mm-hmm. and hope one day you'll find Jesus and 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 mm-hmm. you will all. That's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Yeah, and that's why I think what the gentleman said toward the the police officer mm-hmm. that was that was well thought out, well said. Yeah, yeah, it was really well said. The thing that I hoped that would happen, and the reason I was motivated to do the series, is I wanted first of all people to realize that for most of us, the offense that has been committed against us is pretty small. Right. Yeah. You know, somebody pulled in front of you in the parking lot. You know, somebody took your coffee. They cut in line in the cafe. Yeah. They said something about you. You heard about it. Uh, they said something to a friend. I mean, you could go on and on. <laughs> There's right, little right. offenses that happen every single day. Right. Brothers and sisters, don't talk about each other. Go to the one that you feel has offended you. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, mm-hmm. my experience has been the person, oh man, I'm sorry. I, you're right. Yeah. I didn't mean to do If you approach them the right way, reconciliation right. almost immediately. Don't let it fester. Don't become bitter. Correct. However, there are other people in the congregation that have suffered yeah. significant abuse. Okay. Let's go two categories that are most common. So young women who've suffered sexual harassment, sexual abuse, emotional mm-hmm. abuse, whatever it is. The first thing I would say to you is, if it's been recent, turn them in. Mm-hmm. You're no less a Christian by going to the police and saying, this is what's happened to me. Yeah. And what you're doing, as hard as it may be, you're protecting future victims. Correct. Because he needs to be held accountable. Yeah. Or she needs to be held accountable, either one. Yeah. Same thing with social media bullying. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to tell your parent, tell us, tell tell somebody, yeah. this has to stop and justice needs mm-hmm. to occur. As an individual, though, you forgive them, and you mm-hmm. forgive them by wishing them well. And part of wishing them well is they become they know Jesus, and they they become cognizant of the sin they've committed, and they repent, and they find mercy and grace and compassion. So as you confront the person who's offended you, an everyday what I call everyday sins that are that are still sins. Mm-hmm. You do so with compassion, mercy, grace. You can't confront your sexual abuser because mm. a, a crime has been committed. Something right, has happened right. here, and confront them will put you in the position of harm's way. Well, correct. So you you don't want to be uh, foolish. You want to be yeah. wise. Mm-hmm. But you still, as an individual, you can forgive them and wish them well while justice is being done. Yeah. Now, the family member. To me, this is the hardest one. <laughs> Because families sometimes have consternation, bicker, bitter, yeah. because you have sibling rivalry, you have yeah. jealousy, envy, you have all those things. I have learned, first of all, the, the principles of, of Christ are true or they're not. So they have to apply to every situation. Mm-hmm. Your job is still to love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, yeah. do everything you can to live at peace with each other. But when it comes to family, sometimes you try to reconcile, and it goes back to the situation I used, mm. the, the example that I used. Oftentimes in a family, the more you want reconciliation, the more they will use that against you to hold power over you. It's just the way families operate, mm-hmm. and it's sad. Mm-hmm. Now, if both of you are Christians, oh, now now here's where the, here's where this happens. Then you go to your brother or your sister. It's literally your brother mm-hmm. or sister. And you follow Matthew 18. If you get yeah. no joy, you bring somebody back that both of you respect. If you can't, and that may be a pastor. Mm. 
that both of you respect. Right. And then you go and try to reconcile again. Mm. If that doesn't work, then you're told to treat them. Uh, well, you take it to the elders, but if the person doesn't go to the church, you do, that's a problem because mm. you both aren't under the same authority. Yeah. So if you, so, what 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 I would do in this case mm-hmm. is I would I would appeal to them on the basis of of uh, of God and Christ. Mm-hmm. Hey, we ought to be able to. But you, it's all how you approach them. Right. If you go approaching them, you're the one that did everything wrong. I'm totally innocent. You're mm-hmm. done. You go to them by saying, "Hey, we both have made some mistakes. Can we just draw the line here and say because Christ forgave us, we're going to forgive each other?" Yeah. Yeah. Now, still, there's going to be cases where they say no. And if or or they say, oh yeah, we'll forgive each other, but nothing changes. Mm-hmm. That's when you have your responsibility is to your husband, your wife, your children. Yeah. And that's a case where you forgive them, wish them well, but it may not be where reconciliation is possible. Mm-hmm. Live at peace as far as it, as far as it is up to you. Yeah. Do everything you can to reconcile, but there does come a point when it's not going to happen. Yeah. And you pray and you wish them well. And you pray that God would open their eyes, convict them. But just make mm-hmm. sure when you go, you go not accusatory, mm-hmm. but you go acknowledging there is a gap between right. you and your brother, and you don't want it that way because Christ forgave you. Mm-hmm. You want to forgive them. So in that case, you may go to them and say, "How? what do we need to do to restore this right. relationship? Don't right. point out what they've done in the past mm-hmm. and be ready for them to point out what they think you've done in the past. Mm-hmm. And that's where you got to be able to... Be gentle, yeah. kind, and you've got to say, you know what? That is not what I meant, but it's but it's evident this is how this has been taken. So is it possible that I can ask you for your forgiveness and that you forgive me and I'll try better? Mm. That's gonna take some humility. Yeah. And see, but if they if they give it to you, or you know, if it, you know immediately. Right. Well, you know immediately what they want by their response. Mm-hmm. If they say, "Oh," if they're humble by it, or if they say, "Well, okay, yeah, you know, maybe I'll think about it," then you know this. This, this reconciliation is not what they want. Right. They like having the power and over you, that, yeah. and that's where you do forgive, mm-hmm. but you don't. But restoration is not possible until they come around, right. and you're just going to have to separate yourself from your family. Right. Correct. That's the way it is. My mm-hmm. father gave us a great example of that. So. My father wanted to get along with his brothers, but his brothers were heavy alcoholics. Mm. And so my brother, my dad went to them numerous times, look, when I bring my family around, I want them to know their aunts and uncles and cousins. But if you guys get drunk every time I bring them around, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't keep doing this. And mm. he, did, he tried numerous times until finally he decided the best thing I can do for my family, keep them away from my brothers. Yeah. And it hurt him, but it's what he had to do. Now, they mm-hmm. were always welcomed at our house, and they did stop in, but there was never any whiskey or beer. You're right. Uh-huh. Yeah. There, so. was, there was a boundary there. You come to this house, yeah. no alcohol. And no that nothing. hurt my father because oh, he loved I'm his sure brothers. Yeah. But, and he, he, was, he would always go see them. Mm. So he didn't go, he, he, he continued to see them. Right. And he was reconciled, but he just didn't bring his kids yeah. around them. Wow. That's, I mean, that's a powerful story. Powerful story. Um, and so, I, people who are going to hear this are going to start to have to wrestle with, oh man, yeah, I do have to pray about this, and I do have to go reach out to my brother or sister yeah. or even father or mother, whoever whoever the family member is. But the the fact is, is that this is what Christ calls us to do. Um, and I want to okay. So to close out, I actually want to reflect on this passage. Sure. I just want to hear your thoughts because yeah. um, I think a lot of people miss miss this. When they read scripture in Second Corinthians five eighteen through nineteen, yeah, and when he says, "All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation," mm-hmm. that is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting us to the message of re- reconciliation. So, can you talk about the the fact that He gave us the ministry? Of reconciliation. Yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah. It is, you know, our our call into this world is to overcome evil with good mm. and to reconcile the world to God and people to people. Mm. That's our ministry. And yeah. we do the best we can, but sometimes ministry isn't successful. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, but you bring up something. I, this is Maybe this is a better way. <laughs> I mentioned this, I think, in the broadcast, but I, I didn't mention it in the weekend because mm. I felt it was too confusing. Uh-huh. But uh, modern day... There are those who reject Christianity because they see God as abusing his son on the cross. Mm -hmm. And as I pointed out, no, you don't understand. We don't think that God is three different gods. Mm -hmm. God is one 
one in three revealed manifest in three persons, mm. but they all have the God essence. Yeah. So it's we got to be careful as Christians because God is reconciling the world to himself. Mm. Christ isn't reconciling the world to God. Yeah. So God comes down and he takes the payment on our behalf mm. in the form of Jesus Christ, one mm-hmm. God manifest in three persons. Yeah. And so that makes that that so that otherwise that passage that passage wouldn't make any sense. Right. So our job on planet Earth mm-hmm. is to bring peace, mm-hmm. to 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 encourage reconciliation between brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, in my personal opinion, this is the most difficult time of human history to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I because agree. because of shame culture, mm-hmm. cancel culture, political division. Yeah. So now we don't want to listen to each other, talk to each other, and now we're in a, we're in a time when we really sin is so rampant that we have people that really don't want to reconcile with their enemy. Mm-hmm. They don't see it as a good thing. Right. They just right, want right. to do, they want to do you in. And when mm-hmm. and by the way, when culture becomes like this, it self destructs. Right. When you move completely away from reconciliation and not open, and I think that's a, t- I my, personally I think that's the time when God says, "All right, this far no further. <laughs> yeah. It's time for the return." Yeah, because because we're not going to go anywhere here. <laughs> right, right. Not going to get anywhere, and it's going to be one generation after next generation yeah. with no reconciliation possible. Right. So the, I think that's why I've said that we're. I don't know how we're in the end times now. Mm. Are we at the end of the end times? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think this is still our job to right. reconcile each other. It is amazing to me, Drew, how Christians can get mad at each other over mm-hmm. silly things and right. never talk to each other again. Yeah. And I think that's the point of, that Jesus makes and Paul makes is that, man, if you're a Christ follower, you realize what's been done for you so you can forgive the molehill right. Right. when you've been forgiven the mountain. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. When I hear that passage, I'm like, okay, if if Christ gave us the example or gave us the ministry of reconciliation, then then clearly I got to realize what Christ had done for me, what what God sent his son for me. And through that, I got to look at my own life and start being like, okay, I'm doing the ministry of what Christ has already done. How can I reconcile with people that have done me wrong? But also now, how do I reconcile us as a family? So that way we can live in harmony rather than the destruction of self. You know, that that kind of what you're saying of, of taking us away where where only Christ can now be come in and save us from from that, yeah. you know. So I, I think that's important to to recognize. It's it's always going to be hard. Yeah. I, I I don't want to lie, and I've told people that I have to do. It's forgiveness is not a one time thing. Right. You have good days, bad days, good mm-hmm. seasons, bad seasons. But the important thing is that you're always moving toward reconciliation. Correct. Yeah. And and my personality type, I think personality types deal with this differently because mm-hmm. my personality True. type is I want to always be reconciled. <laughs> yeah. No, I. No matter who has offended me or yeah. what, mm. what I know in my life is that I am also offensive. Just my personality is offensive. Mm. I mean, seriously, to some people, just the way I talk, the way I come across, yeah. I got it. So I am not innocent. I get it. Yeah. I get it. But I'll never understand why two brothers cannot reconcile. Cannot mm. you, Look, it doesn't mean that you have to return to what you once had, but surely— you can have a coffee with each other and say, "Look, you know, I don't know what happened. It's all a mess." And I'm not, and no, no, accu- but right. brothers, let's, we're brothers in Jesus. We're going to be in heaven someday together. Yeah. So let's for, let's forgive each other. Whatever right. I've done, forgive me. I don't. Yeah. You don't need to name it. And I don't. I'm not going to name what I. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. There you go. Why can't I just? I, brute, brute, I will never <laughs> understand. I don't get it. Yeah. I'll never understand it. Yeah. But yet. Yet I've probably got three, pe- four people in my life that I've reached out numerous times mm. and crickets. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so having said that in the last call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive each other for crying out loud. Right, exactly. Explore uh, the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation. That's what we're all about. Exactly. So Drew's already forgiven me for coughing in <laughs> yeah, his, his microphone and sneezing all over his table. <laughs> See you next time.